Okay, hello everybody, welcome back. We are back looking at Pi again today and we are going to be looking at drawing a uh, reticle. Reticle. Reticle um, for your cursor. So if you're gonna go like making maybe a game where you shoot where you're shooting something, um, this is how you would go about drawing the reticle and making the cursor follow uh, the reticle or the reticle follow the cursor in Pi Games. Yeah. We have our resident Pi Game expert with us today, Albert, who's gonna be taking us through that. Okay, Albert? Okay. okay, well, here we go. So Over I'm gonna, to you. I'm going to explain a couple of things in this quick video. I'm going to explain an input loop and also how to draw. There's certain If you go to the documentation, you can see how to draw with pygame.draw and etc. You just, you know, pygame.draw and then call a member function and then it will tell you exactly what you need to put in it so that you can draw that certain object with all those specifications. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do a rectangle. So you're going to start off with uh, importing pygame. Uh, as you normally do, you might as well want you might want random and time for this as well. Oh, well, not random actually, just time. And then you, as usual, you're just going to pygame.init gets everything ready for you. Uh, and now this is the part that makes the mouse invisible. This is a little function that t uh, it's pygame dot mouse dot set underscore visible. And what this this does it ta this takes a boolean. So, for instance, if I put false here, what it would do is it would make the mouse invisible when we open the window. So when we hover over the window, there's no mouse there. Like, there is a mouse here, there wouldn't be a mouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's important for when we make the reticle in a minute, because you don't want the, the mouse, mouse pointer the there, then the reticle mm -hmm. around it. We don't want the mouse yeah, pointer there at all. You can also set the mouse to certain things as well, with uh, different mouse pointers. You can set them up. I have no idea how it's done, but it's a complicated little thing to do with that. Anyway, so then you're going to initialize your display, which would be equal to Pi game. Same as last time, we're yep. just setting the uh, basic setting the display here to 500 by 500. Yeah. Yep. Should be around about that size. I think it takes a point. Uh, set underscore mode. Set mode 500 by 500. Uh, and then you're going to make the frames per second 60. Uh, what that's going to do is, if this was running on different computers, uh, uh, what it would do would be, uh, it's make sure that the display refreshes 60 frames instead of, because it can vary depending on your computer's processing speed. Anyway, then you get the clock, which is pygame.time.clock, I think. Time capital C, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's capital C. Like that. So what we're saying here is we're getting the clock from mm -hmm. my game and we're setting the um, yeah. frames per second to 60. And yeah. we'll look at that in more detail in a second in when a we second, use the yeah. clock.tick function later on. Mm. Yep, yeah, okay, carry on. Right, so first we get our main function. If you don't know how to do a function, I'm sure Mr. Elif has done a video on it somewhere. So two local variables, x uh, and y. It's the best way to start it off. Uh, and then you're going to have a little while loop because you want this part to repeat. Um, so this is the correct syntax for receiving uh, an X and a Y input for um, the mouse position in Pygame. I think it's just uh, if you return two variables from a function, this is the correct syntax to do it in Python. So X, Y is equal to Pygame dot mouse dot get underscore pos. Yep. So just a, just a really quick one here. So this line of code here gets the uh, x and y positions and it uses yep. the two variables that you set up earlier for that. Spot one, yeah. Yep. Right. So just so you can see where it is, I am going to print x and y in idle so that you'll be able to you know look and see where your x and y positions are so you can definitely tell. Now this is a very important part of what I'm doing here. This is the input loop. Without this, last time when we did our window, it just loaded and had like a little loading symbol and it wouldn't do anything. This stops that. This allows the window to receive input and I'm going to show you a few little things you can do in it. Right, so, for event in pygame.event.get. So, for every event in the window, if the event type dot type is equal to pi game pi game dot quit I think it is mm -hmm. 
then quit. Oh wait, yes, just quit. Yeah, that's right. I think probably correct syntax. Anyway, so what that means is if we click the little X button, the little X here, it will register this as pygame dot the type being pygame dot quit. So then it will quit the program if we click the little X. Because it didn't do that last time. You had to close the shell. Anyway, so there's also other stuff with the event dot type for if event dot type equals equals pygame dot mouse button down. Uh, we'll do something there later. We'll just pass them out. So just a quick one here with the event dot type is basically saying that there are certain predefined things set up in Python mm. and we can basically grab those things when we need them. So whether we want to quit the window or we mm. want to do mouse button down, I'm, just, I'm assuming we could do key presses with this yeah, as well. That would be if event dot type equals pi game dot I just shift. There we go. <laughs> pi game dot key down. Uh, then if event dot key is equal to you know, pi game dot shift shift k underscore a then you know do something here as well. We'll just print a then. You've got an American keyboard, I can't find out where the thing is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So yeah. So we'll, we'll look at these in, in more detail in just a minute. So the mm. next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to Render. draw the reticle. So Albert, how do we go about doing this? Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to create a little function. I'm going to call it my rendering function. Because if you separate your logic and your graphics, it makes things easier. So you can always run your logic before you run your graphics and updates. Anyway, so if I go graphics, just a little empty function there. Uh, pass for now and then I'll run my graphics over here so can you just explain what you meant by separating the logic and graphics so what do you mean by logic here I mean the game logic such as the loop here that we've got mm -hmm. for instance it runs the loop first because if I run the loop and I draw it at the same time it's going to be really hard to figure out like say I wanted to make a change so I wanted to change the color of the rectangle or something like that I'd have to find everywhere I'd drawn, drawn the rectangle and that would be mixed up in all the logic, so I'd be confused which is, you know, which is affecting the display and which isn't. So this is just a sort of simple yeah. way of splitting the code up. So you've got the way the actual reticle works here, and then the graphics will be how the thing mm. looks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, and the next part, uh, well, I'm going to say display dot fill. If I did not do this, and I filled the display, refreshed it all to a single color, what would happen? would be that, you know when you get an old computer or something and it breaks down and then all the windows just like, you know, refresh and you get loads of them when you try and move it. Mm -hmm. like that. It would pretty much look like that but with your cursor. Because it would draw everything to the display and then just leave it. So that would be like dragging and lagging. It would be like dragging and lagging, yeah. yeah. Every time you drew something it would still be in the background. Mm -hmm. But this just refreshes the display to black so there's nothing there. Cool. Right, that means the display is black. Uh, now here we're going to use pygame.draw stuff. Now there's loads of pygame uh, pygame.draw stuff here. You can look it up if you go to the documentation. But pygame.draw dot there's dot circle there's dot there's loads of stuff. So so much stuff. But anyway, we're going to be using pygame.draw rect a rectangle. It takes a few functions. Uh, you don't need to memorize it, but you can look on the internet and find it. First thing it takes is the render area, which would be display display not display display uh, and then the color I'm just gonna go for a white color here 255 that's 8-bit color just to let you know so 255 represents 1.0 is you know etc um, then it takes this part's a little bit confusing but it takes the x coordinate at the top left corner the y coordinate uh, and then the origin so where it finishes and uh, well how long it is pretty much how long the x is and how long so this is the x, so it should be just x plus 6 for the mouse. It, x, remember, is where our mouse is. Where our mouse is, x is that point, the x point on that. So we're going to go x plus 6, and then we'll just go y on this one. And we'll make the size of the rectangle 5 and 2. Yeah, 
5 and 2. X, Y, 5 and 2. And then I'm just going to copy this. Albert is now going to copy this because obviously the reticle is going to be made up of four rectangles. So um, just going back here, what he was just saying here. So the X point here, um, uh, obviously that's our cursor. And we are saying that the rectangle is um, plus six. Because this is the starting point of that rectangle. Yeah, it's the starting point of the X on the rectangle. The starting point, and that's going to be the, the top left corner of the rectangle. Top, top left, uh, X and Y, top left corner. But you see these two parameters here, the five and two. That specifies the width and length of the rectangle. So it kind of goes five down and two across, yeah, so and then it will at, fill in the rectangle from there. Yeah, it starts okay. at X uh, plus six, and then goes on with five. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this will make more sense when you do it. Yeah, pretty much. You you understand once you see it uh, actually being rendered. Control C. Command V on a Mac. Command V, ah. Then you just love Macs. Uh, <laughs> See, so yeah, I guess this, these are the ones, that, the coordinates that seem to work for me, so I'm just going to reuse them. So then Y plus 6. This is all for the rectical positions and etc. Uh, and Y minus 8. And then we'll flip these, make that 2, make that 5, make that 5. That too. So anyway, for this mouse button down part. So if we click on the mouse button when we're in the window, we want it to do something. Uh, I'll just make a little thing called dirt, because I guess that's pretty much it. <laughs> Could have been called shoot or something, but I'm going to call it dirt. That's a more sensible variable name. And if you're coding for GTSE, you need to make yeah, sure yeah, that make you're sure. doing sensible variable mm. names. And we'll just display well fill. Go for a red colour, might as well. And then update display. Uh, and time dot sleep one point nine. So if you run that, hopefully you don't get any errors. If you do, I've probably made a mistake somewhere and I'll fix it. We got function. Like something. Uh, yeah, it's probably because I didn't call my main function. <laughs> ah, so yeah. yeah, you want to you you do that. the main function, but you've not called it yeah, yet. Yeah, I've made a main function, I just haven't called it. Huh. One module. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably because we need to carry it across, so we'll make it take x and y. And return x and y too. Actually, no, we don't need to return x and y. What am I on about? But we'll make it take x and y. That'd be useful because otherwise it's an unreferenced global, unreferenced local variable. Yep, x comma y. Go. So basically, the um, the graphic subroutine that you've made here. Is it's taking uh, yeah, it these takes two bit. Where are the, Where it are It needs x and y, y to draw the rectangle. These two separated here. it into a function and didn't put the local. It's taking there. those two bit, basically, yeah, is what you're saying. Much. All right, cool. All right, there you go. Should work. He says. There you go. Now it's drawing wherever the mouse is. It's not updating the display. It's not very good, but it doesn't matter. It's okay for me. It's not updating the display. Probably because I didn't update the display. Ah. <laughs> oh, you need the clock stick as well. Oh, yeah, that's useful. Uh, <clears throat> and then clock dot tick uh, FPS. I don't know, was it capitals or not? You did it with capitals. You know? Yeah, yeah, I did. Hold down shift. FPS. Okay, so let's just say this quickly here. Mm -hmm. So we're drawing the display here, making it follow the X and Y, actually yeah. grabbing the X and Y from um, what you've looked at earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, the display that uh, updates to update, like basically you're saying it, the screen is refreshing yeah. to show the image, and then you're saying the clock tick, tick here is taking the frames per second that you set up here. So could you just explain what that is doing? Oh, well, it... Because it's inside this little while loop here, what it does is it waits, it does this many amount of loops, which is 60, uh, the amount of loops your computer can handle, uh, it does 60 loops per second, so it pauses it just enough time, it varies depending on the processor speed of your computer. Anyway, so this should work. 
<clears throat> like that. There we go. Perfect. Could be a little bit faster. Yeah, that seems to be lagging a little bit there. Yeah. Maybe if we put if it... I up the FPS a little bit, maybe. Just okay. So up the FPS. Make it on that. What can your computer handle, sir? What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. For 120 or something. 120. Yeah. Must have a good refresh rate. <laughs> I don't know whether it's going to handle this. We'll see. We'll see. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. it seems a little bit smoother. Not masses. Yeah. But for what we're trying to display, it is it's doing what it should mm. be doing. These yeah. numbers on the side. Can we explain what is happening in the shell? Uh, that is printing the x and y position of the cursor. So we can see actually as I move round. Um, oh, it's because you clicked on the uh, so click there. And yeah. Flashes red. So if I leave this here, you should see like twenty four, whatever. If you move it to oh, the nice. top corner, it should be zero zero on both. As you get, as it is to zero. There we go. So is x is zero on the side. That's what it's doing. <laughs> it's printing out those coordinates for us there. Mm. Uh, and then when we click, it's flash red, flashes flash red for a second. Yep. You could you know incorporate that into some sort of shooting game. Yeah. Okay, well, That's let's cool. just very quickly run through the final bit, the, uh, what we just did here. So, um, we set the um, mouse to invisible, we initial, uh, initialized my mm -hmm. game, um, we set the display to 500 by 500, mm -hmm. and we've set the frames per second to 120, and then we've uh, put the Pi game clock into here, which we then use later on. Yep. The do it part of it is the bit that allows us to flash red yep. in a minute, yep. Uh, the graphics part here is what actually renders the um, the reticle mm -hmm. around the um, cursor, yeah. and then the main function here is saying um, we're grabbing the um, position of uh, the cursor. Where do we grab? Ah, here we grab the position of the cursor. That goes into X and Y, and then we're yep. printing X and Y there. Ooh. And then um, this will quit the program. This runs the do it function. And this does nothing at the time then? Uh, well, actually, if you run the program again, I'll show you. I've made it so that if you type in the key A, it should print off the letter A. You see oh, it? we can see this in the idle shell. Yeah, you, you can you change just it. see it sort of flashing up there. Okay, so basically what we're saying is up to mouse button down. We don't particularly need this last bit to make mm. the program work, but up to mouse key down. That's what we need to make it, down, make yeah. it work. This is just a little bit of extra we've thrown in. So that is making a rendering a reticle, uh, making it follow a cursor, yep. and actually making it do so many clicks. We are going to be having a little look at some more Pi game later on, but that is the starting point. We hope you enjoyed yep. that. Albert, yep. say goodbye. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> See you later. Thanks a lot for that.